What's up guys, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon here with this man who needs no introduction, Dr. Donald Lehman. And today uh, I thought that we would talk very briefly about glutamine. Glutamine is a non-essential amino acid. It is the most abundant amino acid in the body. It has a very important role in feeding cells of the intestine. It feeds um, kidney, right? It's one of the ways in which the kidney generates uh, glucose for energy. It's important for the liver, the heart, neurons. Glutamine actually is one of the first recognized interfaces between skeletal muscle and the immune system. Glutamine has very, very important roles. It actually feeds lymphocytes. They are dependent on glutamine for their energy. So I wanted to talk to Don a little bit about it as I was looking at some of the literature and the research. And um, one of the things that I had found very interesting is that glutamine is produced by skeletal muscle and it is produced during times of intense activity. So as you train and as you are doing intense activity, the body actually produces glutamine. Um, and Don would say over a prolonged period of time, glutamine levels actually decrease um, through long periods of exercise. The reason I wanted to talk about glutamine is because I'm very interested in the interface between exercising skeletal muscle and the immune system. Again, muscle is the organ of longevity, which makes it fascinating and extremely underappreciated in society as a immune modulary uh, tool. And uh, this is very important. So Don, I don't know, you know, we were talking about ways to increase glutamine production. And when you ingest oral glutamine, the majority of that is taken up by the intestines. So the enterocytes of the intestines utilize glutamine, but it doesn't get into the bloodstream. Yeah, that's right. I mean, 99% of the glutamine, glutamate that you take up that would be in food are taken out by the intestinal cells as energy. So they never get to the blood. So oral supplements are, don't, aren't useful. I first got interested in glutamine as you know, most people know, I study branch chain amino acids. Nobody and, knows that. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, in case glutamine. you're new to this channel, um, <laughs> Don Lehman is one of the world leading experts in protein metabolism, branch chain amino acids, uh, mTOR stimulus, all of the, the, these things that are unique to Don's strike zone and wheelhouse. So. Yeah, so, so branched chain amino acids are uniquely metabolized in skeletal muscle. So unlike glutamine, where basically all of it's removed from the diet before it ever gets to the blood, branched chain amino acids, 75% of it gets into the blood and directly out to muscle. And muscle became the place it's metabolized. And unlike most amino acids that are broken down in the liver, right next door to the urea cycle, uh, these are broken down in muscle. And so you have this nitrogen and that nitrogen then has to be taken back to the body, the liver in some other way. And those ways are either on alanine or glutamine. And so the muscle ends up being a, the primary place we produce glutamine. And just for, as you mentioned, a major um, free amino acid in the body, glutamine is about 20 millimolar where all of the other amino acids are less than one. So mm. it's 20 times the prevalence of other amino acids, huge. Mm. And to modify what you said a little bit, the um, during intense exercise, the level of glutamine in the muscle drops. It's not the production goes up dramatically. It's the 20 millimeter, 20 millimolar can drop to less than 10, maybe as low as five, mm. because it's sort of a stress response. And so as you were talking about the immune system, the leukocytes, the macrophages, it's a primary fuel and under stress conditions, um, the body will dump a lot of this glutamine into the blood to support these tissues. And likewise, as you said, uh, in the kidney, uh, the kidney uses a lot of glucose and during the stress conditions, it turns to glutamine to produce it. So in the And the liver, reason it turns to glutamine, as you had mentioned earlier, it's, the, it's through gluconeogenesis. So it's the generation yeah, so of- In the liver, we always think of gluconeogenesis as alanine, 
producing a lot of glucose, which is for the blood and the brain, but in the kidney, it's a primary fuel and it all comes from glutamine. So yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool amino acid. Uh, frankly, we don't know a lot about maintaining its levels. Mm -hmm. uh, we know we can't do oral supplements. Well, uh, well, wait a second. So you're right. We cannot do oral supplements, but where it can benefit is if someone has GI issues or yeah. has a intestinal tract that has had insults, like you're eating too much sushi and you're getting a bug or you've gotten what, a bug. And, and one of the things we know about breast milk is it's fairly high in glutamine, mm -hmm. but infant formulas never have it because it's not stable in the formulas. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, GI health is related to glutamine content and formulas don't have it. That's very interesting. That's interesting. So people have looked at doing things like dipeptides, so glutamine alanine or some of those kinds of things, but uh, free glutamine isn't present in infant formulas. So I wanted to bring up something else very interesting and um, glutamine concentrations vary depending on the type of muscle fiber and type one fiber, right? Or oxidative fibers can present up to three times more glutamine than type two fibers which are the glycolytic fibers. Um, so I thought that was interesting if we are thinking of skeletal muscle, utilizing skeletal muscle to augment the immune system and one way that we would augment the immune system, and there's many ways. So we are very much oversimplifying and um, kind of segmenting the very dynamic process of the body. But I, I do think that that's interesting if someone were to think about how they would train to target glutamine would you train in a way that would optimize for type one fibers or optimize for type two fibers, which, you know, that's more of the aerobic activity. Um, yeah, I think, I think right now, everybody's kind of attuned to resistance exercise. We've learned a lot about long-term health and muscle, uh, but it's also important to recognize that Branching amino acid metabolism, mitochondrial number, type one fibers, glutamine production, all relates to the more aerobic. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think as you and I usually will say that we like HIT type exercise. We like a combination of, of intense aerobic as well as resistance because both are meaningful to how the body sort of maintains muscle health. Yeah. A key uh, takeaway, so something very practical that uh, can you, an individual can do, would be to take branched chain amino acids. And I, I say this cautiously because in the literature, branched chain amino acids alone are not effective for muscle protein synthesis. Where I have spoken about how branched chain amino acids can be utilized in the past, this is really during a meal which is lower in protein. You're trying to increase the quality of the protein. So you're doing this by adding say five grams of a branched chain amino acid uh, complex, which would be leucine, isoleucine and valine. And I, I do think that there may be some benefit to adding branched chain amino acids during exercise for the reason of increasing glutamine production. And I know that the data would be considered maybe 50-50 on this, whether someone uh, would get benefit or not. But, there really um, hasn't been much research done to look at supplementing branch chains for glutamine reasons. Um, the logic and the biochemistry is solid for that, but it really hasn't been looked at. And as you point out, if you look in the literature for people supplementing branch chain dur during endurance exercise, it's kind of about 50-50. Some people find enhanced endurance and some people don't. But I think the angle that you're talking about would it help with particularly early training for the immune function and some of the stress that's associated with training to take the additional branch chain for the immune system? I like the logic, but again, the research really isn't there for it. Yeah. So there you guys have it. Um, we have slightly different perspectives. Again, uh, my perspective comes from clinical practice and Don is deep in the weeds of the mechanistic and studying um, people and uh, things in labs. And I think that this is a great interface between something that could be considered clinically relevant, uh, worth a shot. And uh, it makes sense from a mechanistic perspective. So in my opinion, I think it would be a great thing to try. 
and you guys can try it, report back, let me know how you feel. Uh, I know that um, I tend to feel a bit better when I take branched chain amino acids. Sometimes during workouts, you know, I've really changed up my training. Uh, again, a feeling doesn't necessarily mean that it is real, but yeah. it's certainly worth experimenting. Again, you are your own experiment. So there's no harm in trying that. It is uh, very safe. So if you guys, I, I any, yeah, that, any last? I that, yeah, I think that's exactly true. And, and, and like you, I also will take them associated with exercise. Yeah. So uh, again, I, I like the concept, but you know, I like to hang my hats on things I have absolute proof for and <laughs> I don't necessarily have it on that one. <laughs> and yes, so there you go. This is, uh, again, this is a relationship of 20 years uh, coming forward for you guys to kind of see how we think about things and how it can benefit you. Because ultimately what matters the most is that you live an extraordinary life and you have extraordinary health. So if you find this video helpful, please share it. Someone who's maybe interested in glutamine or branched chain amino acids, which arguably should be everybody. Uh, and again, the interface between glutamine and the immune system, because muscle is the organ of longevity. And that I believe is the way of the future as we look at skeletal muscle and the ways in which we can leverage this for optimal health. So if you like this video, like it, subscribe, please. Any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down. And uh, we are going to start actually looking at them. Don, you didn't know this, but we are going to start going back. And I, I look at them, but we're going to start going back and we're going to be answering your questions. So uh, questions are always fun. I like <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much.